one thing I've always loved about our state, it's not a perfect state, of course, but I do think there's kind of an egalitarian impulse in it. it. We haven't always lived up to that impulse, but it's been a state that, you know, somebody like Abe Lincoln can get access to books and, and ultimately run for president. And, and I tried to kind of put that impulse in the book itself. There are stories about presidents. There are stories about big, important editors in New York City. But I also have about a dozen stories of just regular readers. And that, that's another reason it took 10 years, because finding that kind of stuff about regular people is not easy. But I think it's important because it, it creates balance to the story. And it also just, I hope, gives readers kind of a chance to understand the history of themselves. So, so like in the Thomas Jefferson story, there's a lot about his huge library. There's a lot about his relationship to slavery. All that stuff is important. But there's also the story of a school teacher who lived at the same time in the same county as Thomas Jefferson. And that school teacher would ride more than a mile on horseback to borrow one book because at that time period, books were rare, books were expensive, books were really important. And so having that teacher story just for a page or so against 20 pages about Thomas Jefferson, I think it just helps us better understand what the literary culture was like in America and, and what American life was like. And, and then again, if you're somebody who likes to read nonfiction or likes to read fiction, if you're a serious reader, you're gonna find so many people like yourself from American history in this book and, and, and their stories are your stories, their stories are my story. And it was important for me to put that in and I have to think that Indiana helped shape that. Um, the other thing is there's just so many Hoosiers in this book. It's, it's like that great Vonnegut quote about bumping into Hoosiers wherever you go. I honestly stopped mentioning that people were from Indiana about halfway through the book because I was like, nobody's going to believe this. They're going to think I'm stacking the deck. But like Grant's best editor was a Hoosier who moved, ended up moving to New York City. Um, Harry Truman's best ghostwriter was a Hoosier who ended up moving to Kansas City. And so like I just had so many examples of this of people from Indiana who did important work behind the scenes sometimes. And it, it was fun to, for me to know that even though if I put them all in there, my editor would be like, did you actually write a book about presidents in their books or did you write a book about presidents in their books in Indiana? Because I signed up for the first one, not the second one. But we Hoosiers will, will know the truth.